Uh, hello, my name is Stefan, and this is my friend and colleague, George. Uh, we come from RTRK company, as you can see on the logo. Uh, we are part of a team that focuses on JIT compilers, like V8, Time Monkey, LVM JIT, and since recently, Logit. Uh, our work is sponsored by Cisco, so thanks to Cisco, we are here. Um, in our presentation, we will be presenting the, the improvements we've done to Lua JIT regarding MIPS32 and MIPS64 architectures. Uh, I will start in, by introducing MIPS architecture and something things about JIT compilers. Uh, MIPS is a RISC architecture. It's aimed at low power consumption and as such is used in, in a lot of embedded devices like routers, modems, um, set-up boxes, IoT devices, etc. We are going to focus on MIPS32 and MIPS46 ar uh, <laughs> architectures uh, and which are respectively 32-bit and 64-bit versions of the, of the architecture. Um, proce processors, CPUs uh, based on these architectures come, in, come with or without floating point unit, which can matter to some people who use them. Uh, some, uh, some things that will be important for understanding our work is that there are two, 32 registers, a lot of registers on MIPS architectures. There are additional 32 floating point registers, registers if the processor has a floating point unit. Uh, process, uh, registers can be 32 bits or 64 bits wide depending on the archi architecture and also pointers in those architectures are also 32 bits or 64 bits wide. Uh, now I will tell something about JIT compilers. JIT compilers are a combination of an interpreter and a compiler. Uh, today there are two main branches in JIT compilers, method-based and trace-based JIT compilers. Uh, Logit is a trace-based JIT compiler, and I will say something about that type of JIT compilers. Uh, trace-based JIT compilers have a trace as a compilation unit. Uh, that uh, a trace is actually a code that is ex executed very frequently. So JIT compilers usually uh, take and compile code that is executed very frequently and uh, they are based on premises that uh, a lot of most of the programs uh, most of the time spent on programs is time spent in loops or e executing the same code. Uh, we can notice some stages in JIT compilation. Uh, we mentioned five stages but there can be more or less. Uh, Interpreter starts executing some code and at the same time he tries to detect he tries tries to detect code which executes very frequently. Uh, when it detects such code, it starts recording what happens in that code and translating that to certain intermediate JIT representation. Uh, when it finishes one trace, it compiles that intermediate representation to machine code and after that, that generated machine code is executed. Uh, so that's some basics about JIT compiler. Lua JIT, as I mentioned, is a trace-based JIT compiler. I assume a lot of people here use Lua JIT and maybe know these basics, but I will mention them. It is compatible with Lua 5.1 and some of Lua 5.2, so yeah, Logit breaks compatibility with Lua. It is optimized for speed. It's more often than not compared to C when it comes to speed. 
uh, it extends law with certain modules like F5 library and Bitwise library and that also breaks compatibility with Lua. Its, it's, it's interpreter is written in assembler so it is not portable like standard Lua interpreter. It supports several architectures but it does not support MIPS 64 nor MIPS 32 without 14.8. And our aim is to add support for those architectures. Uh, I will say something about widget interpreter. It's written in assembler, as I said. Uh, that assembler code is uses DIN ASM to generate machine code. Uh, it's a bytecode interpreter. It uses custom bytecode format, and that is also one thing that is not compatible with Lua. It has different bytecode. Um, as we can see, the bytecode instructions are 32 bits wide. They come in two flavors. Uh, three operand and three two operand uh, types. Uh, they have eight byte opcode. Op uh, they it uses a direct dispatch. It's a method where every instruction code of every instruction has a, a, a code attached to it, which decodes next instruction and jumps directly to its execution. Uh, that somewhat speeds up the interpreter. Uh, this is an example of Lua, normal Lua code and a byte, a legit byte code. I'm not going to say many things, but I will just point out the obvious that it's, that it has a lot of instructions. It seems more complicated than uh, Lua source code. Uh, instructions are very specialized. Uh, as we can see, there is a there is a separate instruction for loop in initial initialization <laughs> and loop body. There is also there are also two di different uh, instructions for handling constants, string constants and number constants, for example. Uh, when it comes to compiler of Lua.jit, it's written in C, but since it generates machine code, every architecture has to have a specific uh, code written for it. Um, it it uh, has the, its own intermediate code that is independent from uh, interpreter's bytecode, but it uses interpreter's bytecode to generate its intermediate representation instructions. So IR code it uses SSA form, that means that Every instruction is one uh, is one value definition, and that value has to be defined before it's used, and it can be defined only once. Uh, when it comes to loops, loops are implemented by using fee instructions. I will not go into detail about that. Um, IR instructions are 64-bit instructions. They have two operands. Operands. Uh, they are uh, stored in an array and can be easily referenced. Uh, constant definitions are it's a bidirectional array and constant constant uh, constant instructions are stored in one direction and other instructions are stored in the other direction. So it's very easy to determine which is a constant and which is not. Uh, each instruction has an output type. You can see. On the example here, I'm not going to do, go into detail either, but you can see uh, instruction name, that every instruction has a name, uh, that's a yellow <coughs> circle. Uh, they have return type that's blue, uh, that's in blue, and we can see that they all have instruction numbers which are used to, re to reference them in other instructions. That's the red. Uh, now my colleague will continue with the presentation. Thank you. Uh, as it's already mentioned, the uh, JIT current solution of Lua JIT supports uh, only MIPS 32 architecture without floating po with floating point unit, but there are uh, many devices such as routers and modems that runs on platforms 
that are 64 bits long or uh, that doesn't have that don't have floating point units, so it was needed to do the porting of a Lua JIT compiler to such platforms. Uh, porting of Lua JIT has done in two separate phases, porting interpreter code and uh, porting code related to JIT comp compilation. Uh, for interpreter code, uh, MIPS32 subfloat support is added along, uh, along with uh, dual number support, and uh, for MIPS64, it's added hard float and soft float support. Similar things are added in, uh, in uh, JIT compiler part. So MIPS32 soft float support with MIPS64 hard float, while soft float support for MIPS64 is still in progress. Uh, all these uh, supports are enabled by extending uh, existing implementation of Lua JIT for uh, MIPS32 hard float and they are based on existing solutions for uh, other platforms uh, such as ARM, x64 and PowerPC. Uh, for start uh, I'll focus on uh, changes in interpreter code. Uh, so first one, th there were changes that were common for um, MIPS64 support and MIPS32 subload support. First of them is uh, defining set of available registers. Uh, in a s existing solution for MIPS32 hard float, uh, both uh, general purpose registers and floating point registers are used. But for soft float case, uh, we need to disable usage of uh, floating point registers since it's considered that they don't exist. Uh, also for MIP64 support uh, it was uh, necessary to adjust usage of existing registers in order to obey certain calling conventions. These calling conventions are important because uh, they keep a live communication between uh, different parts of Luajit code that are implemented in assembly and uh, C, but also it was necessary for uh, communication between uh, C code and code written in Lua, which uh, affects uh, F5 bindings part of Luajit. Uh, calling conventions, among other things, define uh, which registers should be used for uh, placing arguments of functions that need to be called and also in which registers uh, will be held uh, their return value. Stack frame uh, modifications are also partly affected by calling conventions. For example, on MIPS32 we, uh, we have uh, four slots uh, reserved for arguments of the functions, but uh, in MIPS64 case, uh, those were not needed, so we removed them. Also, for MIPS64 cases, since uh, it has uh, larger registers, it was necessary to uh, enlarge those slots on the stack frame. And as far as soft float uh, support is concerned, uh, it was necessary to uh, add uh, more slots for in stack frame that, were, that would be used for storing uh, content of uh, uh, called sa call or saved registers across the functions calls which are um, much more used in soft load support than in hard load. Also one common adjustment is dual number support, more words about it later. So specific soft adjustments for soft load support. Uh, in order to enable soft load support it was needed to change code in a way th uh, that would enable executing floating point arithmetics without using floating point unit. Uh, along uh, besides some basic uh, changes such as replacing uh, load and store instructions, floating point instructions with uh, load and store instructions that use uh, general purpose registers. It was uh, necessary to uh, modify operations that were performed by floating point units. Those operations are automatic operations, comparison operations, functions for finding minimum and maximum value, and for loops. 
uh, majority of these uh, operations are actually performed by calling appropriate C function. These functions are uh, floating point emulation routines that were enabled by uh, GCC, which is used uh, for compiling LuaJIT. Uh, as because we are using C functions, it is necessary to stick to calling conventions in order to get proper uh, values. <coughs> and also it is needed to save the content of all used registers, color saved registers, uh, across the function calls. Here on the table on the right side, we can see some of the floating point instructions and functions uh, which, uh, with uh, which we replaced them in subfloat support. Uh, dual number mode, what uh, it represents. Uh, in the uh, current existing solution of Lua JIT, all numbers are represented as 64 bit uh, double values, and it was okay because uh, all the arithmetics is performed in floating point unit. But uh, now that uh, soft load support for MIPS is added, uh, this was uh, in a way overhead for case of short type values because. Uh, Operations, uh, for, uh, operations for that values were performed uh, also by calling functions instead of just uh, one instruction and CP unit, central processing unit. So uh, it was necessary to avoid uh, con converting these uh, values into double values and uh, perform uh, operations on them with just one simple instructions. Here we can s instruction. Here we can see part of code uh, which, uh, in which we entered it, that changes. So for if when dual num case or mode is active, uh, short type value will be stored in lower word of 64-bit value, while in higher word will be placed at type value constant. And that's how we uh, have another number representation. That type constant uh, is uh, used to uniquely determine uh, value which is stored in a given 64 bits. For example, if we have in high word uh, co uh, value that is equal to that constant, that means that lower word is a short type value in complement to representation. If we have uh, in high word value that is lower than constant, then it's considered that uh, all 64 bits are double value. And uh, if it's bigger than that constant, then those 64 bits does not represent any number. Uh, in order, uh, dual number support also includes uh, further modification for arithmetic operations and operations similar to them because it was needed to add a checking type of the operands in order to determine whether the operation will be performed in a central processing unit or by calling appropriate C function. For comparison operations, uh, they are also implemented by calling appropriate function. Uh, same function is used for all comparisons, but in order to find out the relation between them, it was necessary to examine the result of that operation. Here we can see uh, all the return values of that function and what uh, each return value mean or which, uh, which relation it represents. Uh, the same uh, approach is used for modifying uh, functions for finding minimum and maximum value and uh, for for loops since they also, they are based on comparison operations. Back to Stefan. Okay, so I will tell some adjustments that we made specifically for MIPS 64. Uh, note that these are just uh, adjustments in general. This actually requires a lot of debugging and testing in order to actually know that this is happening. So, uh, it, we based our solution on existing MIPS 32 architecture and MIPS32 architecture has 32-bit uh, wide pointers, which is not, and it handles them as such values, which isn't very good for us because 
MIP64 has 64-bit wide pointers and they have to be handled in a different manner. And this thing is, this modification had to be done all over the code, which required a lot of test cases written for that. Uh, the next thing is uh, handling light user data. As you probably know, light user data is also basically a void pointer. And it's, it also depends on the architecture. It's width, so it uh, just like internal pointers, it needed special handling. Uh, next thing are 64-bit values. Uh, in MIPS32, those values require two registers to in order to load the 64-bit value, but in MIPS64 it, it requires just just one register. So this is also uh, this also can be found uh, in lots in a lot of parts of code. Uh, allocation of 32-bit memory space. Uh, what this means? Logit actually uses only 32-bit addresses, so in order to uh, work properly, it has to get 32-bit address from kernel when it allocates memory. So this had to be modified for 64-bit architecture. Uh, also, what was required is to, is to tell uh, assembler that that generates machine code the how to encode new instructions that MIP64 uses. Uh, and yeah, that's it. Now I will I will say something about adjustments made to JIT. Uh, a lot of adjustments made to compiler also apply to JIT, but they are much harder to identify. Uh, I'll, 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 I will tell something about JIT specific adjustments. First of all, uh, what's required is to modify entrance and exit from generated machine code. Uh, this requires adjustments in both interpreter and uh, JIT part. Uh, for MIP, for soft load architecture, we need to reduce number of registers because soft load architecture does not use floating point registers. Uh, we had to implement new calling conventions for FFI bindings. And uh, yeah, another interesting thing was that JIT actually uses part of stack that uh, belongs to interpreter and this, if someone decides to do some, some similar thing like we did, this can cause a problem which is uh, somewhat hard to identify. So it has to be defined how much of interpreter stack JIT can use so it doesn't rewrite something uh, that you don't want to be rewritten. Uh, for soft float, we also had to define root uh, C routines which actually do floating point arithmetics. So JIT has to know which routines to use. That's about it when it comes to JIT. But also, it's uh, worth not to note that uh, testing JIT is very different from testing interpreter because in JIT. If JIT fails, interpreter can sometimes do the work for JIT and some obvious mistakes can be hidden. For example, if, for example, if, we, if, we want to, uh, if we want to do something simple in a loop, like add two numbers and JIT fails, it can just go back to interpreter and interpreter will do everything right. It's just that the program will be slower. But sometimes it's not that easy to identify. Uh, and this is what we've done when it comes to testing. We have, since Logit does not have official test suite, we had to write a lot of our own tests. We also used uh, Lua, Lua tests, but we had to comment out some things because they didn't work, even on X X64. We also used the Lua test more, which is one test suite for Lua implementations, as well as Lumen tests. Uh, well, we also did some performance tests. They also yielded some bugs, and these are still yielding some bugs. Uh, this is some chart which shows 
the performance bet uh, the, the performance difference between Lua 5.1 and Logit Interpreter. It shows how faster Logit Interpreter is in comparison to Lua 5.1. Well, it can be around five, four, five times faster, but yeah. In some cases, like in, there's a, there's a test called reg, reg, regex DNA. It it is faster, and it's supposed to be faster. We know for a fact. So that test shows that we have an issue which we haven't solved and haven't still identified. Uh, this is Lua 5.1 versus Lua JIT with JIT enabled, not just interpreter. Uh, it shows a lot more improvement, up to 30 plus times. And it as well shows that the test it isn't faster and should be faster. So we also did performance tests for MIPS32 soft load support. Uh, we compared uh, Lua 5.1 and uh, Lua JIT, uh, both uh, built with soft load in soft load mode. Here we can see comparison uh, of Lua JIT interpreter and uh, Lua interpreter, we can see how many times for each test uh, is Lua JIT interpreter faster. And on the other slide, we can see a uh, comparison of uh, Lua JIT with JIT compilation enabled and a Lua 5.1 interpreter. Uh, so, in order to see real results of our work, we compared Lua JIT uh, with our soft float support without implementation of it and uh, Lua JIT without that support which means uh, it was uh, run on in hard float mode on uh, architecture without floating point unit meaning that uh, all the floating point uh, instructions are emulated by kernel which we can see in results of tests that uh, soft float support of Lua JIT is much much faster than soft load emulation. That uh, previous slide was uh, just uh, comparing interpreters of both versions Lua JIT and here is the results for uh, JIT enabled compilation of Lua JIT soft load emulated and with soft load support. Here we can see that there are some tests that are up to a hundred times faster with soft load support. That's all from us. Thank you. Are there any questions? Yes? Which version do you have to do? I'm sorry, which? Which, uh, which version? 204 or 201? Uh, we worked on version 203 of Logit. We started before uh, 204 was released. <laughs> Uh, well, we are planning to upstream this by the end of the month, hopefully. Okay. Uh, did you compare the uh, these results with the native implementation? With what, what do you mean by native implementation? Native, because that's the logic, and how do you behave if our algorithm is written in C++? Uh, well, we haven't actually compared that, but we will do that. Thank you for the suggestion. <coughs> you see, when you told, uh, talked about the dual representation of numbers, that you have yes. the part of it, do you have any kind of static analysis to know whether a number the result will be an integer or it's all dynamically tested in execution time? Uh, well, we have we actually worked on back end, so we don't actually know how the, the front end works, how how it's done, how it de determines whether it's a double or uh, a short. It is handled on the level of uh, interpreting instructions. So when there is instruction uh, by with name or tag B C K short, which means that it's short instruction. In initial implementation, uh, it was uh, it considered changing that value or uh, converting it to the double value. All we did was uh, 
disable that in dual num support and store the that value in a way that it came to. Yes, that, that, but for instance, when you do, you do an arithmetic operation, an yes. addition, <coughs> then you test whether the numbers are integers. Yes, of course. Dynamically, that's what I mean. Uh, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, you don't yes. have any kind of analysis that knows no, no, beforehand no. that. Dynamically, we test operands that came that came to that part, and if they are both integers, then it is performed. And then you With pass the, the instructions to, to check whether there was no overflow. Yes, yes, of course. Uh, well, we uh, the numbers are in advance set to uh, short or double, mm -hmm. so we get values that are that that is, we get a value that is short. We don't convert it actually. Yes. No, that part I understand. What I'm thinking that maybe because you know from one operation that the result was short, then the next operation wouldn't need to check again. Because it is a GT, you would know. In that case, I'm getting only integers. And then you only escape if there is an overflow or something like that. Uh, well, what, what he mentioned was a change in interpreter, not in JIT. Uh, in JIT code, uh, it was already handled. So uh, it was only necessary to handle the interpreter part because in JIT part it is uh, so it's already making those assumptions whether yeah. some number should be uh, float or not because it uses uh, other type of uh, internal representation and so. I mean, it's already, it was already... The, 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 G, the standard JIT already did that work. Yes. yes. I assume that's, that's it. Thank you.